All right, let's get into some detail on the cells and structures of the nervous system. So nervous tissue, you've read about this in chapter five previously, at least a little bit, and hopefully you've reviewed it for this week. So the main um, cell that we will focus on as part of the nervous system are neurons. This, these are the excitable cells that are able to fire action potentials and allow our nervous system to be to communicate. So this is the neuron, and there are some components of the neuron that I want you to know. So the soma is the name of a cell body. That's basically, cell, soma equals cell body. You'll also see this called neurosoma, um, which just refers to the soma of a neuron. These dendrites, are where incoming signals are received. And then there's this axon. This is the long part of the neuron where it's gonna go and reach out and communicate to whatever cell it's communicating to. So those are the three parts for now. The other thing I wanna point out on this slide here is all these other little dots in the background. Um, so this image is a real histology picture up top here. This is kind of just drawn on top of that to make things a little bit more obvious. But the same things are shown in these two images. All these little dots, well, they're labeled here, but even before you saw the label, these should look like nuclei, right? With most stains, we look at the nuclei stain um, really dark purple, stain, stain dark. So these are the, the nucleus of the neuron looks like this. It's big. These glial cells are neuroglia, so supporting cells that are in the nervous system that are much more prominent in number, but they're also smaller. So they are really important for nerve functioning, um, neuron functioning, and we'll, we'll talk about them mostly today because I want you to know about them, but then most of the nervous system will focus on the action, the function of the neurons themselves. And again, nervous tissue, you should know this is located in the brain and spinal cord. That's the central nervous system. We would see these cell bodies, these somas, in ganglia within the peripheral nervous system as well. And then remember that nerves that go out into the periphery are bundles of these axons. And these axons are then these long cell processes that carry electrical signals to another neuron or a, another cell, some, sometimes it's sometimes not, is not a neuron. So this is about neuron structure today, as well as the glial cells. We'll get into neuron function um, next week. So these are some of the components I just listed on the other slide, a couple more here as well. So I want you to be able to do is walk through and label this neuron as best you can. Um, either you maybe have printed the slide or just in your head at least. So the anatomy of a neuron, and I want to also point out this is called a multipolar neuron. So this is most of the motor neurons in the central nervous system are this shape. We'll talk about a couple of different shapes in a bit. Multipolar means that there's a cell body, which is this, with a single axon coming off one side of it. Um, so I just want you to know for now, multipolar neuron is what this is called. So hopefully you were able to label some of these components just based on that previous slide and also maybe just kind of figuring some things out based on the, the words. Um, it might look like this. So the ones in the previous slide were these dendrites where the incoming signals are um, received. The nucleus you should have known already, right? Cell body, which is also the soma, with this whole thing. The axon was from the previous slide. The axon hillock was a new one. Right, so this is this location right here where the axon begins. This is gonna be a very important part for the generation of action potentials. This location is kind of where that action potential initiates, um, right where the cell body narrows down into the axon. It's called the axon hillock. And then the last one was the axon terminals. Hopefully this word, kind of you could guess, terminals is the ends. This is where the axons terminate and synapse or talk to another neuron or sometimes a different cell. So what I'd like you to be able to do is draw this. Um, I'm actually gonna do this for you now. You know how ugly this can be, so hopefully you can do better than me in your own notes. Draw a neuron. So actually what I wanna do is pause and draw your own neuron. 
okay, this is what mine's gonna look like. That's it. That's what I'm gonna draw. Um, this is the most simple form of a neuron you can draw. And this, you're gonna see this all over in the book and in my diagrams to represent a neuron. Cell body, there's a nucleus in here. If you draw it, fine, great. Uh, got an axon, you got axon terminals. Oftentimes it's shown as two, sometimes there's more than two. Um, it's kind of generic, right? Generic neuron. You also may have drawn dendrites, that's fine. You can add those. You won't always see those in every schematic. So maybe it looks like this. Okay, so the reason I want you to do this is I want to go to um, this example here. These are some examples of neurons that different folks were asked to draw. So I'm trying to get my spotlight back here, there we go. So this top row here, um, I can move myself over a little bit for now. <laughs> These top row here were drawn by undergraduates. These I believe were kind of postdocs level, so people who have some um, graduate training, so graduate students. And then these are drawn by like science researchers who study neurons, um, have a PhD. And what, it, what it, you notice about these different drawings? This is not about quality, right? Some of these drawings are really quite good. They're beautiful. And that's great. If you want to draw a neuron and make it beautiful to help yourself learn, please do it. Um, if you put enough time into it, it looks beautiful. You can turn that in for extra credit. However, I also want you to be able to draw a neuron quickly and accurately. So these ones down here, these are neurons, they're just fine. You'll see some variety. So some of these are examples that aren't multipolar. So just some of the variety you see is because there's different kinds of neurons. Um, but what's similar about all these neurons down here is the simplicity, most of them. Um, so the idea here is that undergraduates are able to reproduce by copying textbook images, um, and that's what's kind of done up here. The students spend a lot of time drawing these pictures. They're, they're nice. Um, but does a student who drew this really know these parts well? Maybe. Um, these experienced scientists down here are were able to make more conceptual drawings that represent what I did in that previous picture, the basics. Cell body, uh, I'm gonna draw mine again. Let me just go for it. Um, cell body, axon, dendrites. This is the conceptual drawing of a neuron. Um, and the big idea behind this is learning to reproduce textbook images is not learning science. Make it your own. Take a picture you see in the textbook, process it in your brain, and be able to reproduce that the conceptual idea of what that image shows and not just copy the picture. So this is true not just for neurons, but neurons are a great example of this idea of being able to draw concepts, not just reproduce images. Okay, and again, you will see me drawing that simplified version of a neuron a lot as we go through the rest of the semester. Okay, so that's multipolar neurons. We just learned the structure of. Um, however, there's some different categories. Here are some structural categories of neurons. I like to show this image because this is um, Ramon y Cajal was a scientist who spent, he was, was an artist as well, so he would draw um, images of what he saw in the microscope. And so 1906 is what, when this is Nobel Prize was given to him. So th what this shows is kind of some diversity of some different types of neurons. This is a Purkinje cell uh, with a ton of dendrites. Um, these are some of the different cell types that he observed. So it's also a good, nice example of the overlap uh, that art can have with um, neurons. So what I wanna do is talk about some of these categories that we now use for these different variety of neurons. So I'm gonna make myself a little smaller here as well. And multipolar with the type that I first um, mentioned to you, that is where there's a bunch of dendrites, maybe um, like I showed you that very simple diagram, or maybe a big tree like this, so a dendri dendritic tree. Um, the simplest version of a multipolar neuron, I'm gonna draw it another time looks like this, little dendrites coming off of here to add a little bit more of the complexity. That's a multipolar neuron. This one neuron is gonna to talk to, um, information goes one direction, goes this way, from there. Um, that's multipolar. 
there's two other types of neurons that we will see. And it makes you write down here too, this is mostly motor. All motor neurons are multipolar. And then also some interneurons. So these are in-between neurons that are in-between, like within the central nervous system. Unipolar, that means there is one long axon like this, and then the cell body is coming off of that axon. Dendrites are way down here. So that, that um, morphology, that anatomy is different. Here, the axon is here. So I'm gonna actually highlight all the axons on this image. Unipolar tend to be sensory. And we'll kind of see why this structure makes sense when we see them in the peripheral nervous system. And we'll see how these cell bodies are grouped in the ganglia. Um, actually, I can't help it, let me do it now. So if you have these dendrites, that's where we receive signals, right? Incoming signals, these could be like in the skin, um, right? You've got touch receptors in the skin, sensory neurons. You don't wanna have that cell body on your skin, right? That's a bad place to have the cell body, why? Cell body is where the neuron is going to um, produce all its proteins. That's where it, that's the, that's the most important part. That's like the brain. We want to protect the brain. So it's going to be far away from the dendrites, closer to the spinal cord. So that's one example of where a unipolar neuron would be. Would be this would be skin. This would be right near, this would be in the CNS then. It would be talking to the axon, axon terminals would be talking to another neuron in the spinal cord. If this doesn't make any sense right now, we'll come back to it. But this is where you'll see unipolar neurons, so sensory. Lastly, bipolar neurons are less common. We'll see these in some special senses. So you may have heard of bipolar neurons in the visual system, it's one type of neuron um, that are involved in vision. So special senses. So we will come back to these briefly at the end of the semester. These are neurons that have um, basically the cell body right in the middle, similar to unicellular, but this is axon, this is dendrite. So unipolar, it's coming, the basically the difference between bipolar and unipolar is this is, has this little extra blip here. This, this is right in the, the cell body's right in the middle. So we're gonna receive signal this way, the action potential is only gonna be this way. So the axon is where the action potential, that electricity is um, being generated by that, this neuron. Talk much more about that later, of course. Okay, that's the introduction to the three types of structural categories of neurons. Again, I'll try to remind you of these categories when we see these neurons and why they matter. Right now, overview. The other thing I want to talk about in this video is neuroglia. Um, these are the other important cells in the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system, so both. This here is the neuroglia in the central nervous system. I think you can see everything here. We've got, first of all, the neurons, the biggest cells here. Those are not neuroglia. The rest of these are. So astrocytes, start with those. These cover the brain surface. Um, and the non-synaptic region of neurons. So these feet go out and are, are gonna cover the neurons and then also cover other things like blood vessels that go through. And this is going to form the blood-brain barrier that you may have heard of. Um, it provides nutrients to neurons. They do various growth factors, help to regulate electrolytes um, and the importance of them has become more known as we're studying them more and more, um, like removing extra potassium as, as the neurons are constantly exchanging ions with the um, extracellular material, they are helping to regulate this extracellular material so that the neurons can function properly. They also re remove some neurotransmitters, things like that, regulate the ECF in the brain and spinal cord. Um, they also form scar tissue when there's damage. So that there's a big role. Astrocytes are super important. Okay, next is the ependymal cells. These line the cavities of the brain and secrete cerebral spinal fluid. So that's about it. Line the cavities, secrete the CSF, the cerebral spinal fluid that I'll mention, um, come back to briefly later, that kind of um, surrounds the brain. It's a very important fluid, the cerebral spinal fluid. Microglia 
Um, these are immune cells that phagocytose, you know what that means, ingest microorganisms and destroy them. Also dead nervous tissue they can help to destroy. And then oligodendrocytes form myelin in the brain and spinal cord. So oligodendrocytes are actually what the cells that are making this myelin sheath, oligodendrocytes form myelin in the brain and spinal cord, so in the central nervous system. I will come back to myelin as a separate short video next. So that's a whole, that is its own topic. So neuroglia in the peripheral nervous system, there's only two. So satellite cells are surrounding the soma of a neuron, so the cell body, and they provide like electrical insulation, regulate the chemical environment of the neuron. So it's similar to astrocytes, but definitely a smaller function, not as many functions, um, but the chemical environment regulation piece. And then Schwann cells, these are right here. This is one Schwann cell. This is another, this is another. Um, these are gonna form the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system. Um, what's cool about these is they can actually help to regenerate damaged neurons. So the next video is going to be on myelin sheaths specifically and a short one on repair as well. So we'll come back to both Schwann cells and oligodendrocytes um, in a future lecture, as well as next week when we talk about myelin sheath in terms of nerve conduction. So what we've done here is identify and describe the major components of a typical neuron. So I've listed here what components I want you to be able to tell, um, draw, and which part receives input signals and which part transmits. So received is the dendrites, transmits is the axon. Compare and contrast three structural types of neurons. These are the three types. Respect to the structure, location, and function. Um, function just kind of sensory, motor, special sensory. And then describe the structure, location, and function of each type of neuroglial cells. And that's both in the peripheral nervous system and in the um, central nervous system. All right.